should we jump right into it? Getting nuts with my teeth on. <laughs> okay, well, welcome to the Unstoppable Force Podcast. I'm Guy. And I'm Rob. Um, And we're going to be talking about some classic WoW this week yeah. on our 20th, okay. 20th episode. Hold on. What? Are you going to point out the fact that 20 is no, the first two numbers in our year? No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you that we need to not do this. I'm telling you to <laughs> stop. This is like me like cutting us off. Oh, okay. Because, um, yeah, that bit should not keep going. This just gets a wow. Okay, fine, fine. Um, But yeah, I mean, we're basically just talking about how wow classic came out, and it seems like everyone's kind of pretty into it. Yeah. Surprisingly. Well, they're so into it that they already announced that they need more servers, and they're going to oh, yeah. get rid of the cap on character limit. So There was a cap? Yeah, like how many characters you could have had. What did they have it on? I think it was... Um, there was something kind of like... like Something like 20 or something like that, or 50. I don't remember. It was like... Basically, you can have different... Like, your personal character, I think. Yeah. So, like, how many characters you can have. Right, I think there's like a 10 limit character though or something like did they shorten it down to like two characters each person or something like I'm um, just curious. Um That's interesting though. I guess they just found that people wanted to like play around with different characters. Yeah, more. I mean, what this what's the point of jumping back into nostalgia if you can like hit everything you've ever done or like right. try things that you think like oh, I like play this, uh, I feel this, but then it's like let me try something kind of new that I, I could have had the opportunity to do before. I mean, it's overall, it's an interesting kind of strategy by Blizzard, and I find it funny oh God, that yeah. like there's like a almost like a trend of, I guess you could say there's like the reboot or the re like, uh, what's the word nostalgia? like nostalgia? No, not the, nostalgia, the but like where they take an old game and then they remake it and they maybe like buff the graphics oh, up remaster? a little bit. Remaster, that's yeah, yeah. the word. Um. And this is, I feel like this is like WoW's version of it, and it's like not even a remaster because it still is essentially just original WoW. Yeah. Um, and people are still like totally down to play it, and I I just find it fascinating like the amount mm. of interest. I guess I never played WoW myself. I tried. I played like the trial. So. We had I had a friend that was like, "Oh, you gotta play it." I'm like, "All right." So I bought like the game and the expansions. There's like three expan, two or three expansions, and then I was like, "Okay, cool." So I start playing, and I'm like, "Oh, I got this like three, like month trial or whatever it was, thirty day trial. I don't remember." Mm-hmm. And I'm playing, and it's great. And I'm like getting whatever level. Then it's like, "All right, now it's time to pay," and it's like it's fifteen dollars a month. I'm like, "Uh, excuse you? I might have played this shit every single day for like half the day because it was like mm-hmm. all summer, and I was like addicted." this shit i'm not paying in that though like it was like so good to almost pay for it and it's like crazy um but i think that's also why like they don't need to um i think wow and i guess like these um massive online games like when there's Mm -hmm. like subscriptions um they like the whole remaster or re-release of these games is kind of there's an advantage there that other games don't have where like Oh, you get the people that buy the game, but now like people can hop on or off of this, and they're like gonna subs- they're gonna buy the their like monthly subscription, and then like oh, and then like I'm not really gonna get it, but then like your buddies are gonna get it, and then yeah. everybody's just buying a subscription for months, and I think it, they'll just make way more money than like a game that would just release and you know be a single uh, cost. So they are still charging like a monthly yes. fee for classic. Yes, it's the same cost. It's like paying for WoW monthly because no richie way. our buddy he just signed up the day before he had subscribed just to, to play on day one and he was in like a like a it was like a 30 minute wait time to get in and then it went up to 40 minutes and like so on it like it was like when tfc came out basically yeah. like there was that whole yeah um fuck man that sucks that's that sounds not fun no none of this sounds fun in any way that's why i'm so surprised because it's like hey you like wow Mm -hmm. well we're gonna take everything away and leave literally just the grind fest of the original game and it's it's like 
we're also going to make it cost the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the way, we're not going to actually properly support it or have enough mm-hmm. servers or well, even like make any design choices whatsoever to improve player mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. despite the fact that it right. does not it's not made so, to handle this right. number of people. And the overwhelming nostalgia kind of creates um like this fog uh, like these ro- it's like rose colored glasses for mm-hmm. these players there's like oh it's so good nostalgia and then like oh i forgot how hard this game was meanwhile it's just yeah. the mechanics that were bad or or certain things that were greatly improved that you're going back to something that's not good it's just now mm-hmm. it's just hard you know quote unquote hard and the thing about wow classic is that it's not even just hard it's okay so i think the best like thing to look at when trying to talk about wow classic and if you want to like compare it because there's not really a good comparison remasters or sort of but there's only one great comparison that stands out Mm. and it's runescape yeah when they went and they released the original version of runescape i I don't know if it's runescape classic i forget i think what is it called classic i thought it's classic is it just classic um I mean, I, I literally I have it on my phone. School. I've I've been playing. Oh, yeah, old school. That's mm-hmm. what it was. That was it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when they came out with RuneScape old school, um, a lot of people are uh, went back and played it yeah. and are still playing it. And I played a, quite a bit of it with one of my coworkers um, at my previous job. And the fascinating thing is that it's not really the type of game that you remember. I probably guess you could say like remember it being in a way. It's actually more reminiscent of an idle game. Mm-hmm. And it basically like you kind of go to these areas and it's like if you're you're farming rocks, you can literally just farm the same four rocks in front of you forever. <laughs> yeah. And it's just how many times you have to hit the rock before you get an item. Yeah. And then like same thing with you know, catching fish, fish yeah. or fighting enemies. And like you have these numbers in the bottom right corner of all your different levels of like the different stats that you're using. Mm-hmm. And it seems to like kind of have turned into this like game of stats, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's just like, you know, farming that next level and going to that next area to then continue to farm to that next level. And it's more of turned into that. And I think that that's where classic wow. is also going to find itself working in that it's very grindy. Yeah. And it's like, takes a while to reach like milestones where you, you like are being rewarded. Um, but at the same time, it's like, it doesn't really require much of your brain power to like, right click on something and then use some abilities yeah. on it. Well, now also like the, with the wait times, not just like for loading into this game, it's, there's waiting for quests to load because of the respawn times of like the items that are needed or whatever, because that right. was about what it was back in the day. It wasn't like everybody has their own instance and you go do this. It's, it's this realm, you know, each, um. Yeah, realm that you're in, like the server you're in, it just loads, and then it loads like three minutes later. So now there's a whole line of people playing this game <laughs> in the game. I never really understood why, like, MMOs ever did those sorts of mechanics in the first place. I think they were restricted, like, te- like technology wise. Technolo- yeah, yeah, technologically. I think that for classic WoW, that's true. But I played like ESO. Mm-hmm. And that game also had that same mechanic. I remember there was one mission where you had like pour water on a fire in order yeah. to like, you know, stop Destiny the town from burning. Too. And like, then there would be these wait times. But you can just make the client side run that, can't you? Can't you just like make it so that I I mean, like there's tons of mm-hmm. games where like UI and I mean, if things it's like so that. new that like Borderlands it's like just getting it you know like the last version of it you know i don't know it's kind of you can check the timeline right where like borderlands 2 or even pre-sequel didn't have instancing in co-op in four people on the same server Mm -hmm. didn't have instancing of your own loot and now they do so like i I don't know i feel like i mean i guess you could say it's like doing four times the work and like four different people or something but now you're doing that for hundred whatever I mean, I guess not like the instancing part is is not really what I mean, but most mm-hmm. more just like solving the issue with like a different means. Yeah. Because like in those situations, you walk up to a some sort of number essentially mm-hmm. in in a in a server's like set of information that says, you know, is this currently active or is it not active? You know, boolean on or off. You walk up to it, you use it 
to do whatever quest and it goes off and then the timer gets um launched basically yeah. like it's a method that turns off when it's interacted but then also sets off a timer mm. and then when the timer runs out then it tells another function to turn in the boolean back on and then you can use it again right yeah. so just from a programming standpoint yeah now then there's an animation associated with the turn off and turn on usually um that gets launched at those times and then you could just make it so for example why not make it so that it's the timer's shorter? You said there's like three minute yeah. timers between them. What mm-hmm. if the timer was ten seconds? Is yeah. there an abuse? Well, a person doing a quest is only or doing the quest once. once. Yeah, if you get the one item. Yeah. And if you don't want him, because maybe it's like something where like as they come up, you can redo the same one. Just make it so that they can't redo the same one. Right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's yeah. like why? What was so difficult about making these things shorter back then and now in any of these games? Like I. I yeah. seriously don't get well, it. Well, also, there's the whole, like, avoid the situation. Like, it, like if there's, like, a fire you have to put out, like, that's in that one spot that you have to be doing. Like, otherwise, it's, like, it's there to be happening versus, like, something you have to go get or kill. Like, that can be spawned kind of differently, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of, like, these games sometimes were, like, weirdly designed in that sense. But then I also think that since this is like WoW Classic and they should be totally anticipating all these people and they're just like, okay, we'll just give you Classic WoW. Yeah. We're not going to like make changes, update it in anticipation mm. for They just put it on like a better ver- better server. That's all they did and like put like a – it was like mm. lighter basically to run. I mean, people just play video games differently nowadays oh, and yeah. like there's way more uh, people – and they they made like no preparation that, for that. Like so, then that kind of like reminds me kind of the. It's not just like nostalgia the people that they play. It's the people that missed out on playing like mm-hmm. the old WoW. You know, it's like oh wow, like this this is like what I was missing out on. Like this is old school gaming. Like this is our version of going back to play Atari. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. like basically what's happening. I think that all those new players are going to get bored very quickly, though. I think everyone's going to get very bored very quickly, and that might be why they didn't have the server capacity, is because mm. ultimately... They didn't expect, I think. Well, okay, so this is an interesting thing, and I think video game companies do this on purpose. So there's, like, let's say you, you're releasing a game, and you have servers, and you anticipate that and it's a free-to-play game, mm. and you anticipate that in the... Uh, First, when it first releases, you've done all this marketing, a bunch of people are going to download it and play your game. Yeah. Right? But you, it, it's all about the number of people online at the same time, concurrent players, yeah. right? So if there's this big burst of concurrent players at the very beginning of a, a game release, a game's release, actually, regardless of if it's free to play, um, everyone's going to get on at the same time, mm-hmm. right? But in two weeks, mm-hmm. the new concurrent players is going to be a very steady like straight yeah. flat line yeah. with like very regular you know times of the day changes of like when when peak times and, and low times and um you know as like updates come out it'll peak up again but they just have to make sure that they are like covering those peaks and not being overwhelmed but they don't want to like you don't want to go and spend you know a, a ton of money for a really large number of servers just for that release bubble. Mm. If you know in two weeks that there's not going to be as many players. Yeah. Yeah. And now you've got like three times as many servers as you needed players because there was three times as many people Mm. at launch. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, I think that's part of the reason why we see games, even triple a level games like battlefront, Mm. battlefield, cod apex kind of, yeah, even apex, like any of these games, like they run into server issues usually very early on. Mm um and like the first couple of days or week or whatever and a lot of that yeah. has to do with just the number of people yeah trying to play i wonder else. if it's like sort of a self-fulfilling thing too where it's like the servers are filled so i'm not gonna really play so then i'm like what this game's like they can have the servers good so i'm not even mm-hmm. gonna play so then that even drops off because you can't get into a game. right but if you spend like 60 bucks on a game and then you get on and you can't play because the servers are being overloaded oh, yeah. And then, like, two days later, they come on. You're not going to be like, oh, I spent $60 no, on this game. I'm not going to play. Um, if yeah, it's a free-to-play game, though, yeah. then, yeah, the, you may lose out on a potential customer. Or, like, or subscription-based. 
Yeah, or mm-hmm. subscription based. Um, which is what in this case wow. uh classic falls into. Yeah, yeah. So they they may just like done whatever data that they did and they know that this many players are gonna play yeah. in a month and they're not gonna like insanely buff these yeah. servers. Yeah. Um or they'll do like some sort of temporary thing. I don't know what these companies do in that situation because it seems like it's a lose lose. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think Blizzard so Blizzard said that it was gonna open up four more classic servers. Like this was in the, the like, it's just the first like the few worlds, days. Right. No, like like the server so the realms is the is the yeah i guess it's like the yeah it's kind of like the worlds well there's like there's like the realms kind of which, which is like kind of like the areas right you mean like different... within azeroth yeah 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 and then like the, yeah there's servers so there's four different four more servers that they're adding which mm-hmm. i guess is pretty significant do you just like launch WoW and then like click on Classic WoW server and launch that yeah. instead? Because I know that like uh, when you pick servers, you have like characters on. The I think servers, so. I think it's like classic. Like, hey. I think it's like separate. Yeah, I think it's separate. And so I, I found out the the character limit thing. So originally in, in like WoW Classic, like in the beginning, like when it was out, it was it was three characters per account. Mm-hmm. So then in this day, we're gonna have up to ten characters per realm. Okay, and so they kind 50. of just standardized yeah. it to normal WoW. Yeah, yeah. That's like a weird move on their part. Like, why only make it three? I don't know. I think they just didn't think this thing was going to blow up like it did, but it also probably shouldn't blow up. I actually don't think that WoW Classic has been properly set up to do as well as like RuneScape Classic or RuneScape Old School did. No. Because that just feels like an idle game. I think it could be... the There's a thing that... WoW has though that RuneScape doesn't have is that we have the updated version. So the people that mm-hmm. were like nostalgic that still play the new stuff, they're going back to play classic, seeing how they want to play, but it's still not that great. Let me just go back to the good shit mm-hmm. and then get that like well, addiction I, back. I think they're trying to make WoW classic into its own game, and it's possibly off of the foots of RuneScape's old school doing as well as it did. So yeah. I don't know. I, I'll be honest, I don't even really know how old school WoW worked, and I feel like we're slightly um, un- unqualified mm-hmm. to talk much about old WoW. Um, but I've heard that it <laughs> like leveling to the max level is like almost impossible. Mm. It takes forever yeah. and is insanely difficult. But the interesting thing about that in video games is that I do think that when it's there's like an exclusivity to something, and there's like only two or three people at level 59 or something that immediately makes people find it fun Mm -hmm. to climb Mm -hmm. and get higher level and you know continue to get better stats but um with runescape it's not really as level focused it's more Mm -hmm. like individually stat focused and Mm -hmm. i think that helps and i think it's also a little bit less um demanding of your mind runescape you can kind of just like repeat tasks and you can like get bots like we're making a bot to play runescape is one of the easiest things mm-hmm. in the world and you're not going to get caught because a bot acts just like a human <laughs> because a human is just going to repeatedly do the exact same yeah. task in the exact same way yeah and as efficiently as they can um so like that just feels like an idle game but then then you have wow and even classic wow you're still jumping around constantly hitting all of your abilities Mm. every time they come off of a cooldown like Mm. you still have to pay attention to your area around you Mm. you kind of you can't even just like run up to an an, an enemy and just start auto attacking them until they die like in runescape you're just using one attack yeah but in wow you have to keep cycling through your abilities so you have to actually give it your full attention yeah so i think it it actually doesn't it's not suited for our age of like games whereas okay. i think that like runescape old school just was a modern game that would have existed if it was an idle game essentially like an idle rpg yeah that, ma- like, that makes sense and even the art in in runescape like old school is up to par on mobile <laughs> yeah well because yeah mobile game like um graphics are kind of like you're down of like yeah graphics on your pc or something and then also like it's not even just like the technical limitations of your phone because there's like fantastic looking games on the phone but yeah. also like there's a aesthetic to that 
an yeah. art an almost like artistic yeah, yeah. look to it and i think people like that look. i also don't think people want games that destroy their battery like yeah. if you have such a great game like beautiful game and it's just you're mm-hmm. playing a few hours of it now you're already gonna like your phone's gonna die nobody wants that like this game i'm not gonna play this game it just mm-hmm. kills my battery and on top of that no developer wants that because now that's less time that person's playing the game so they kind of want the, them the players to be on there as much as possible so it doesn't yeah I'm honestly really curious where Blizzard's going to go with Classic WoW because I, I mean, I know that they have said that they are going to update it. Yeah, I think that they're going to have support for it, like pretty good support for it. I'm just like Some curious. I, I'm guessing that they're going to just realize that there are so many things broken in their original version of their game that in no way um, make people have fun. Like these lines that are being created, and yeah, I they're gonna start by solving that and like polishing the game, so it's gonna be kind of like trash for a while, uh, while they're like kind of I guess updating it and like mm-hmm. making it actually somewhat enjoyable. I, I think, oh man, I think it's gonna happen pretty quickly though. Maybe I mean, I mean, okay, obviously the problems can be found quickly, and I think that, um, and they're gonna be found. Quicker than if it was a game that was new, because mm-hmm. like the people that were playing WoW, they already know what the mechanics were good and what was solved. So they want they kind of want those problems to be fixed first. So it's like more streamlined in that sense. And like the whole yeah, why we have lines in this game, like for like an item, right? Um, that and there might even just be like old designs on how like the clan systems work yeah. and like. You know, just even how leveling works and how grinding works yeah. and da- dungeons like and raids and, and yeah. people might find people exploiting things in different ways mm-hmm. or um I'm just sure like, there was some sort of like trade trading something exploit. It probably got patched a long time ago, but like there's some sort of like item There's, yeah. always, there's something, always something like that. Every game. I mean, yeah. even when they think that they've removed them all, there's still somebody out there who came up with some new way of doing it. It's yeah, yeah. just a little bit more difficult, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it's Activision. You always kind of have to remember that, that Blizzard is now Activision. Mm. I would expect that they have a team for classic WoW that mm. is established. That's a very specific number that's working mm. exclusively on WoW classic yeah. and it will not grow in size regardless of how yeah. good WoW classic does, because yeah. that's how Activision does okay. their games. Well, we know like. There should be enough support on this game because we're getting Overwatch 2, and my prediction is that we just get Overwatch 1 reskinned. So I think there's not going to be a lot of effort on that part. So I think we should... I don't really know what they're even going to do for Overwatch 2. doesn't even make sense. There's no story. I mean... The only thing I could think of, and and I don't, we we never, have we, have we ever talked a bit in depth on on why Overwatch kind of sucks? I don't think so. Um, I mean, just really just, quickly, good. it's basically that the game never really changed whatsoever since release. Right, like there's no uh new no new mechanic game modes, not good game modes, and if they're and then but the characters, it's like you know two a year or some bullshit like that or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's and there's no good way to. The thing is, they're also missing out like incentives to play the game. Yeah, they they just didn't really support the game very well. They didn't release a lot of content for it. They didn't come out with new game modes. They didn't try anything new. I think that's like really what it comes down to is that it was just like new map, mm-hmm. but none of the maps are really gonna feel particularly fantastically different. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be like, oh, this map's kind of fresh, but it's not better than any of the other maps I've played. Mm-hmm. Oh, this new character came out, but it's not really any better than oh any God. of the characters I, that already exist. Yeah, let me hold on. Let me stop you there because Baptiste just feels like they mashed like soldier together with the, like I don't know like a like a little bit better support. Like they didn't even like really do a good job on like making new character. Like they came out with the new tank Sigma, and he's mm-hmm. interesting, but he's feels like he's missing something. Like he's in the really he's, like, it's like gravity based sort of. You like throw these little orb, like the two little balls, and it's like implodes and it, it gets the enemy and mm-hmm. kind of pulls them in. That, like, that's his like basic attack, which is like kind of whatever. But then, like, he gets um, one of his abilities is to uh, like, 
grab like put debris around him as like a ball of like rock or some shit and then you throw it and that kind of is a charge up so it's like a heavier attack yeah and then he has um he can stop projectiles and that turns into shield so like that's like diva's thing basically but adding shield into him and then he has a he has a shield that he deploys and you hold it down and like the longer you hold it down the farther forward it goes and you can just like remove it like instantly and it like mm-hmm. re-goes until it like gets destroyed out of you. Hmm. I mean, that still doesn't sound, like, that interesting. It almost sounds like Nunu from, like, League of Legends, almost, mm. where he, like, rolls the snowball and then, like, rolls it towards people and, mm. like, um, does, like, similar things like that. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was just, like, you describe that to me, and, I, and it doesn't, like, immediately sound like a super mm. cool... It- Oh, he, like like even League when it comes out with a new character, I'll give you the most recent one. Mm. Okay, it's a character that is like this assassin from a hidden land. Uh, she's like the, a queen of some like race mm. that that has been hidden, mm. and she has this gigantic circular blade mm. with like three crystals on it, and she kind of runs with it, her body inside of the blade, like around her. Okay, and um, it has three elements: it's earth, wind and um water and so one of her abilities is like this little mini dash and Mm. she can click on the river Mm. for water the like any grassy areas for the grass and then like any rocky areas Mm. for earth yeah and each one has a completely different effect on her q ability yeah so the the rock one kind of just creates like more of like a molten aoe through the center yeah um, then the grass one will actually launch you through it mm. and then it will make you invisible over the area that you jumped like forward in or yeah. you, like through your queue through. Yeah. And then the ice one causes a stun that will freeze them. Mm. Um, and then her other ability is, uh, what is her E? I think there's another dash. Mm. So her, yeah, so she's got a short dash, a long dash um that i think does something else and then her q is that um and then her ult is uh basically depending on what you use it over it will slightly change its effect Mm. but if you push it a person into the wall then the wall will create an explosion that will go all the way around like imagine if you did it next to like the dragon pit it will go Mm. all the way around into the opposite side oh So it, like, trails the wall for, like, a certain distance. So you can, like, hit people forever away Mm. if you're really really smart about it. Doesn't that sound more interesting than the guy you just described? I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I also didn't really give a backstory. I mean, he was supposed to be some sort of mad scientist. Like, he's basically a crazy scientist. And, like, he's supposed to seem like like Hannibal Lecter kind of thing. Where, like, he has, like, kind of schizophrenia. And he's, like, voices. And then, like, he's, like, Mm -hmm. what's that music playing? But, um... I don't know. I think that character you just described kind of is more has more elements to it than like other characters, even though in in like Um, because like yeah, like but that's the point though. Every time they come out with a new character, they have to step up their game and they have to keep wowing the crowd. And I feel like when the hamster ball came out, people were like, "That felt like April Fool's joke." Yeah, like (laughs) no one was, no one thought that that was that cool. No, no, no. Um, so between like them being slow on updates, yeah. Then they also fundamentally had an awkward game, and I think that this was where people might not really know what I'm talking about as much. But the gameplay was this like ultra team fight oriented, uh, sort of all in. If you kill everyone on the enemy team, you win, and if you don't, you lose. Kind of game mm. because healing was so strong mm. that you basically. You know, if you di- if you killed somebody and got them down to fifteen percent health, they were back to hundred percent in about five or- to less seconds, mm. right? So you either had to kill people, or they would heal and get away, and that was all Overwatch was. So like, if you ever looked at it at the highest level of play, teams would like be in like bunches constantly, yeah. And then when they would team fight, everyone would use like all their ults, all their abilities, and like you either had to blow up the enemy team instantly, or you lose. Okay. Or you lost. Wow. Um, and I, I told you about this mm. is the over reliability on healing mm. as the form of support. And the fact that healing is so strong in the game 
that it makes every aspect of its gameplay revolve right. around yeah, the yeah. healing. Yeah. And it's like I said, cause it's a burstiness, right? Mm-hmm. So in like league of legends or other games where there's larger health pools and damage isn't as high. If I bring you down to 20% health, even if you're still at full health, I can outplay you and kill you. Yeah. Right? And the, that's because I'm probably not going to get healed. And, like, only a few people in the game heal. And then most other supports are um, buffs and debuffs. Yeah. Uh, CC. And along with tanks, a lot of supports focus on CC. Um, and also uh, damage mitigation, which you can consider yeah. like buffs, but like more like standing in front of somebody with a shield. Is yeah, yeah, like damage mitigation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and things sort of in that realm. And then there mm. is healing. Yeah. But healing is just one of the many different tools of a support. Yeah. Versus like Overwatch, where they tried having Symmetra be a support, and they literally couldn't do it with shield. So they were like, fine, fine, fine. We'll just make her something else. Yeah. Make her a turret yeah, but, like spammer. I mean, I I would just say that like other than like Lucy, so Lucio and like Mercy are like the main like full healers. Moira's kind of like that, but she mm-hmm. still needs to attack in order to heal. The other ones kind of. Or, like, mixed bag. Of but, like, like, Zenyatta, for example. If he yeah. gets an ult off, mm-hmm. and the enemy team, like, Genji ults, yeah. like, Hanzo ults, um, Zyra ults, mm-hmm. not Zyra, uh, what's her name again? I haven't played Zenyatta? No, Zarya. Uh, Zarya, Zarya right? Hand. Like, you could just negate everyone's ults. Soldier, mm-hmm. like, even, um, like, Reaper. You just kind of instantly stop their ults. Mm-hmm. So a lot of overwatch is like focused on this like burst and anti-burst mm. and all the characters are designed around burst yeah. and anti-burst well, and they, healing they just updated patched it to make uh ults not like as like often so like, that's kind not of, in any way it I, sounds I, like a I, terrible band-aid to the problem yeah Do they even know their problem I'm blown away that Overwatch has not figured out that the over-reliance another... on healing is the entire reason their game isn't fun. I don't know. Like, they still haven't... Like, you remember playing it. Like How that. annoying yeah, is it yeah. when you almost kill somebody and then they're instantly full health two seconds yeah. later? And then that's, like, the whole game. Mm. And it's only that. In team fights, it's just like, oh, can we kill them before they get healed? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's the whole game. Can we kill this person before they get healed? Yeah. It's it. And the optimal number of healers on a team is two, and that's why you don't see three or one, because three means you don't have enough damage, and one means you don't have enough healing. So that's why there's always two healers in every game, and if you don't have two healers, you lose. No matter what. It doesn't even matter if you do four DPS, two healers. Four tanks, two healers. Uh, Two tanks, two DPS, uh, and two healers. They've all been meta. The only thing that stayed the same throughout every meta is two healers. And it's terrible game design. And they refuse to change it. They refuse to update it. They refuse to... And that's what I think they're trying to do is maybe... I'm hoping that they're trying to do in Overwatch 2 is kind of revamp the mechanics. Because mm. I think when you revamp an old game's mechanics, then you just end up with this like community that's like, I want old Overwatch. And then the other community uh, that's yeah. like, I want new Overwatch. Yeah. But if you make another game, then it's like more status quo. Mm. To like have it be completely different than its original, so maybe they'll just, try to like fix those yeah. problems without I don't know like, I think, scaring their fan base. Like, do we not get support on Overwatch One then? Just move it all to Overwatch Two, and then Overwatch One dies, and then if Overwatch Two is much better, then we're just stuck with the same shit and like half a team. I don't know. Like, we're just gonna get like one character a year for both games, or we're we gonna get like more characters on mm-hmm. Overwatch Two when it comes out. And it's Activision, so you can bet your asshole that they're going to. It's going to be another forty dollars purchase. Yeah. Um, because they refuse to believe in a free to play model. Literally refuse. Well, okay. On all fronts. Except sure. for like maybe mobile. Uh, but I don't know with I, I the Overwatch, um, the way they set up their like loot boxes, it'd be like this changing the that. monetary system like insane. They would need to change it so much. I'm like, fine with the forty dollar so cost if I still get the very friendly, yeah, and uh, enjoyable experience with the loot boxes. Yeah, because basically you just play enough, you're gonna get the boxes. You're gonna get enough cat coin. It's or get... though, dude. 
they know how much money they lost by not having a more abusive loot Maybe box that's system. what they do because they're not going to I don't know, man. That's I, that's what I think. I think that ultimately they didn't really like the. F- you, you ever hear like when a game comes out and there's like the framework, like like is this game scalable? Is this mm-hmm. a game that as time goes on that we can continue to add to and adjust and improve and add content to, without having to like massively adjust yeah. mechanics and how people play? Because you never you want to try to avoid that as much as you can. Yeah. So like in League of Legends. My game is identical as it was when it came out on the mm. first day of release. Like you're still walking around, right clicking, using yeah, four yeah. abilities. Everything's the mm. same. Everything's constant. But they, then, like they still the patch meta- char- characters on the league, right? Like, they what? They like patch character actual champions. Yeah, so it's like about sometimes? every three weeks, there's a patch notes okay. and there's buffs for okay. characters, champion. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's new skins. There's okay. like. Buffs to items, yeah, runes, yeah. masteries. And... I was just curious. Okay. Uh, it's not runes and masteries. It's just runes now. Um, but like, uh, they come out with T of T. They add a mission system. They rehaul the the blue essence there. They change everything from IP over to blue essence. Mm-hmm. They um, make it so that as you level up, you earn boxes now. Um, you can also earn crates by playing games on champions and earning S rank on them. And um, then you earn keys from their robust honor system. They have rotating game modes that they were doing. They have a Ram, they have um, twisted tree line. Then these are totally two different yeah. games. Like uh, twisted tree line is obviously it's still like the regular game. And then, and, and a Ram is like, you're still like playing as top down mm-hmm. champions in the same way. But the map uh, and how you play on the map changes. Okay. And then they have like other game modes that come out. They have events that don't just include new skins, but they also include entire like built out mm-hmm. games that aren't just like mm-hmm. rehashes of last year's. Yeah. Like how they did the same like Halloween event mm-hmm. three years in a row, basically, and no one cared. Well, actually, a lot of people cared, but they didn't care. Oh, I know. Watch one. Yeah. 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 Um. But, like, I can't imagine they can change the maps up that much on the league. I know they have a little, like, I don't know. I don't play that much. But I personally I, I, like the less maps, higher quality, mm, than more I think maps, I played, lower quality. No, it wasn't that game. I played, um, whatever, like, clone of the league. Oh, it was, like, the... It was the... Um, It was like the other big company that made like a, the a MOBA that like I forget what it's called. It was like Dota, play. like not Valve? Dota. It, there was the other one. There's like there was like a third one. That was There's like, like Smite. I don't know. Is it like third person instead of top down? Yeah. Yeah, it's Smite. Okay. Um, and there was also like Paragon before mm-hmm. Epic shut that down because mm-hmm. of uh, uh, Fortnite. Uh. But it's, I mean, it's it's just interesting, like looking at how games have changed over time, and then, like which games did and didn't, and how they changed, and like, mm. you know, is Overwatch two going to be totally different? Is Classic WoW going to suck? Is it going to get changed to mm-hmm. basically become the new WoW that we know and love now? Or like some weird, different version of it that's maybe more like towards RuneScape's strategy? Like, are they gonna just? The thing is, it's not even on mobile. I don't like. I feel like RuneScape, old school, did this like perfectly. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, you, you can say that it's oh, bigger going... than RuneScape. RuneScape old oh. school is bigger okay. than RuneScape is now. Imagine classic, wow, being more like no, played I, more I than wow. I understand, but I, I unless like they came out and said that they kind of like or some there's some sort of way that you actually know that they're basing coming out with. WoW Classic off of, of RuneScape Old School. I don't think that the the point of this is to do... Like, yeah, they found the nostalgia, but I don't think that they're trying to get as big. They're probably um, not trying to get as big because hopefully they recognize that they can't because that their game is fundamentally not know and they don't. Design. Not. Yeah. But I think, like, when you get something greenlit by a company, you have to prove it's monetarily it. viable. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's Activision we're talking about here. Activision is, like, the king of all evil right now in like gaming basically and they're gonna do everything that they can to make money 
So I feel like even if they're not planning on following directly in um, old school RuneScape's sort of strategy, I do think that when they pitched it to the to whoever they had to pitch it to, that RuneScape old school was a big like seller. Like mm-hmm. they needed a proof of concept. Yeah. Video game companies do not do things new. They are they are not fans of trying out anything new. They have to have some indie company do it first, and then they're like, "Oh, hey, wow, this thing works. Yeah, Let's do this right. now." Yeah. Um. So I, they the only proof of concept is old school RuneScape. Okay. Yeah. Um. And they're even like, look at the name the name of it. Wow, classic RuneScape old school. Like they're doing even the same thing where they're like throwing yeah, a different come out word. With wow. Right. Of it's course. Already there. What are you gonna call it? I, I I you have to call it something, but I'm saying that it's wow, like nostalgia. I'm saying that it's it's a very similar idea of like this old school MMORPG that has been updated for over 15, 10, 15 yeah, yeah. years that re is re releasing its original version in an attempt to make money. I get it. Yeah. So and, and they both using even the same the parallels like, are absolutely, there. absolutely yeah yeah um but. I just don't think that they're set up for it. So we'll see how they take it. I think it's going to be interesting. And like how old games are so much grindier and content like void. And they're more like these long, longer. It was like time killing things. Right. I guess the best way to explain. But also it's like um, delayed gratification versus Mm. immediate gratification. Whereas like games today are built from the bottom up to, Mm. to basically feed our addictions. Yeah. Yeah, like like um in games now, instead of like the slow rewards or like rewards later, they give you a bunch of rewards in the beginning. You're like, oh cool, give me more, give me more, and then over time it kind of slows down, so that you need to have a the timer, the cooldowns in order to get the next reward. So then you pay for the gems to to speed up the reward to get it. Like like the reward system got monetized, I think. Basically, and, yeah. And it kind of flipped it around where like you weren't seeing rewards. For a while, and you need to play to get there. But now we're given all this stuff. We're spoiled. So now we're spoiled. Run, and it's like, mm. oh no, you want more? You come and get it. Like you have to, <laughs> you have to pay for it. Otherwise, you're not gonna get it. I personally think that they're all so overly complicated, though. And I, whenever I play, like when I play mobile games now, like I search through and try to like find the games that say that they have the least amount of like douchey advertisement sellings and things like that and then even when you play them it's like you end up finding yourself hitting walls yeah. all the time and it's like fine i get the, now they want me to pay money like i've gotten to a point in the game where basically i cannot continue mm. unless i pay money yeah and it's like i think it's like monetary systems focused on whales is like the problem mm. where they like there's these small percentage of the population that'll pay an insane amount of money and sometimes it feels like like monetary systems are are designed more towards those people. Yeah. Um. Whereas like old games were like very long in their play like worth because it would just take so much longer to get mm. to that max level and wow mm. that it's more like every level is like a achievement. big achievement yeah, yeah, right yeah. and it, and it, and the game doesn't put all of its content in like the first you know yeah 24 hours of playing and then deprive you for the rest of it yeah. and then tell you to pay money right now yeah. or else you can't or, continue yeah or you wait and like they're like art it's like artificial game play like um game time like of playing yeah where like oh i have to wait like eight real time hours let me put this down for eight hours and then you're gonna come back and play it so it's it's like, oh, like I've been here the whole time, but it's not really. It's just like you're coming back for the the little bit of time while you're waiting to do something. And there's definitely a focus on like getting people to like open it up every day. Yeah. Even if it's only for like ten minutes. Yeah. Because then that's like retention and like concurrent users. Because it's I think they usually do it about thirty days. So like the number of unique logins over a thirty day yeah. period is their concurrent players. Yeah. So if I like open it up and then I close it and I don't open it up for a month. If I'm outside of whatever range that they, they are using for concurrent players of that month, then I would fall out of it. 
So yeah. they they're trying to keep those numbers high because when you're when you're a game as a service, mm. your most important like data measure of success is concurrent players. Yeah. So that's that's also part of the reason why they do that. The like eight hours to open up a box yeah. or whatever. Um. But yeah, the new new video games are are sucky in their own way, and old video games are weird and sucky in their own old way. <laughs> We'll see if WoW is even WoW Classic even takes off. I feel like it's gonna I feel like it's gonna die really hard, really fast. I think um it was worth the shot for them to come out with this so that the people that th- when it dies, they just go to the WoW that exists, the new one. Mm-hmm. Like how it exists. And maybe now. they got some new players so that's or something. I think that's like it's like having a plan B. It's like if this fails, they're already paying for the subscription. They Honestly, know this part's better, they're gonna stay here. Part of the sell for making WoW Classic was probably the upfront cost. So if they can prove that the cost of making it and supporting it and putting it out there for people to spend money on is really low, then that the margin is really high. So even if people only spend three, four, or five months max yeah. paying the monthly fee, they'll probably have made their money back by the end of this month Yeah. on whatever it costs to make the game. So... That's all Activision's caring about, is caring about whether or not the game is going to make a profit or not. And as long as it does, they don't really care if people don't play in five months. Yeah, they don't really know care. If they, if they made a profit or not, if they actually update it. It doesn't seem like they very much care about supporting games long-term anyway, so... No. Really wish that they'd go back to that sort of style of development. Like, Diablo 3, they could have come out with like way more expansions and content and stuff, but... They're like, nope, Diablo 4. It's like, I don't want to keep paying $60 every couple years and then get like a game that's not going to really be updated after a year and a half or less. It's annoying when the game is on its own already so good and if you actually supported it, it could be a game as a service that can be played for, for years. But for some reason, Activision is obsessed with this upfront pay like like monetary mm. style it's really annoying yeah i think they need to change i think they need to learn and i don't know and all of blizzard's games are like made to be games as a service yeah like if everything that overwatch 2 will be was just slow updates to overwatch 1 nobody would have been that thrown off by major mechanical changes or like Things like that. And then there's not this awkwardness of like, well, what about all the effort I put into your last game? I've got to start from scratch now. Like, what about all the skins I paid for? You know, what about all the stuff I unlocked? Yeah. Like you can't, you can't make me spend like hundreds of dollars on a game and then just come out with another one three years later. It's not fair. You can't make an upfront cost, design your game as a games as a service and then not have it be a game as a service. It's not fair. Yeah, I'm f- so I'm for all for like patching up games, to make them better and stuff. But I feel like if I'm like if I bought a game and I'm playing, I really like it, and then they patch it, like when they fucked up Mercy so hard, or like other your favorite characters, you're just like fuck this game, I'm done. <laughs> like you're like I'm paid for this, but now I gotta play. But if it was free, and like you're playing your character, it's like all right, whatever. Then like you'll stick around. But when they change it, then you can just hop off and not give a crap. Yeah. I I mean, I just think League of Legends, I always come back to it as being, in my opinion, the by far best example mm-hmm. of a game as a service done correctly. That yeah. thing has been updated yeah. so much over the last, like, ten years. And it is, like, there's just new, there's, like, five brand new, like, systems, mm-hmm. game modes, mechanics. There's, like, yeah. six new characters a year, four new reworks a year, like, over 30, 40, 50 skins a year. Like, I don't even know how they're doing it. Yeah. Um. If Oh, oh my God. If Overwatch, like, adopted the whole, like, um, like, unlocking character thing, like, if it was, like, free to play, if it was, like... I would enjoy it more, service, too. And then it was, like, unlock your characters and you get whatever free one to play per mm. month whatever it is right that's kind of like what league does i don't know how often they yeah they have like up. uh like eight champions that are okay. on like a like a rotation, rotation every yeah. week yeah yeah being week, free week yeah, yeah if overwatch did that that would be like that would work. but apparently overwatch is really hard to make characters for 
Maybe because they designed their game mechanics in a stupid way. Well, for, for, I think first person fucks it all. I mean, it does a bit, but also you can't have a support right now that's not a healer. Well, yeah. Like, okay. where are the shielding well, supports? The where are the buffs and debuff supports? Where are yes, all these supports? No. Yeah, but so that's the thing. It's not just the mechanics. That's the actual characters. Like, you can change how they are and what they play. Because if it's just a mechanic, then that's a different... That's a different what I'm thing. saying, though, is I'm saying that they've actually made it so that they can't use certain mechanics in their game because those mechanics are not favored by the mechanics in place. So, like, a new type of support could never be added other than a healing support because you would never pick anything but two healing supports on your team. And if you're trading off damage or tank for that support, now you don't have enough damage. I mean, what if it's kind of like what I said. You have to hey, have two supports. You mean if it was, like a, it was like a damage buff support? You know, I think yeah. That would, that would be, like... I mean, th we have some damage buffs and uh, supports already in the form of, like, Mercy's um, okay. beam. Which is not even nearly enough. And then there's, like, the Discord orb, which is enhances damage on a specific enemy. Yeah. But, like, there's not really anything, like, where I can, like, link up with a teammate. And yeah. now we're, like, you know, whenever I use an ability, it comes out of their body, too. Or, like... They're not being creative at all with their mechanics, and these are all like you can even just steal them from other games. Just steal them from League. Yeah, League. Honestly, if you want to steal mechanics from any game, League has the number one most diverse mechanics of its champions by a metric ton. Like, you think Batista is like a, a mashup of other characters, and yeah. they're only on like thirty-five characters now. League is at like 160, and every time a new character comes out, even everybody in the community is like, fuck, that looks cool. Yeah. Like, Yumi was the last one, and Yumi, like, basically um, becomes, goes inside, in quotes, of another character, and they can no longer be targeted for attacks. Okay. And they give a, a percentage of their, stati or their stats to the person they're attached to. Yeah. And then all of their abilities come out of that person. So you have to like coordinate with a person and like you know use stuff at the right time and then you're like jumping yeah. between bodies in a fight yeah. like of your teammates right. and stuff. Like they, every time a new character comes out, there's like totally new cool fucking mechanics that yeah. completely change up not just how they play but how everyone else in the game has to react to how they play. And I just yeah we're, we're ranting now. I feel like just a bit. Overwatch is so annoyingly bad, though. I, I played, I've played so it's much. Disappointingly of it. bad. That's the problem. It was yeah. had like some good potential and like had some good time with it, and then it just like the, just it, it just feels so risk just, averse. Yeah, yeah. And like two champions a year. Yeah. Right. Like you guys, you're on like thirty five. This is not hard to do, people. Like. How about we don't pay our animation teams like a retarded amount of money to make a brand new like 15 minute short every time a new character comes out and then maybe you guys can come out with them more often cuz I, I don't I, it sounds like that's probably taking longer than making these shitty ass characters yeah like league has its own release stuff but it's it's different per character so that it's based on the specific character mm. and it could be like a comic it could be just a short story. It could be a video that's only like one minute long, and it's not that insanely high mm -hmm. quality. Like it's not a Pixar movie. Like we don't have to make a fifteen minute Pixar movie for every new champion. Okay. Right. Um. Yeah. So video games, Blizzard, WoW Classic. Tell us what you guys think. What is that? We'll leave it on that. Yeah. Okay. That sounded good. I like that. Okay. See you guys later. Bye. As always, thank you for listening and following. Check us out every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, anywhere podcasts are available. You can find us on Instagram at Unstoppable Force Podcast and Twitter at UforcePod for news and updates. We'll see you guys next week. And, and until, until then, then, stay unstoppable. unstoppable.